Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, I'm going to present my top eight Raspberry Pi distros, or in other words, my top eight files you can download from the internet, write to an SD card, insert in your Raspberry Pi, and use to do all kinds of exciting computing things. As you may anticipate, first on my list of the top Raspberry Pi distros is Raspbian, the native operating system from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Raspbian has improved significantly over the years and now has a really nice and highly customizable interface that works well at a lot of different screen resolutions. The full install of Raspbian also comes with a great deal of very useful software, including many programming languages and utilities, LibreOffice for word processing, spreadsheets and presentations, the Chromium web browser, and various games and accessories. If you're new to a Raspberry Pi, checking out Raspbian really is a no-brainer, and indeed, it remains my favourite Raspberry Pi operating system. A solid alternative to Raspbian is Ubuntu Mate, and yes, it's pronounced Mate and not Mate, as Mate is a Spanish word. In comparison to Raspbian, this distro offers an even better look and feel, but is also more resource hungry. Ubuntu Mate therefore takes more time to boot than Raspbian and can sometimes be a bit sluggish in operation. Because it's a more intensive distro, there's also not a version of Ubuntu Mate available for any Raspberry Pi 1 or Raspberry Pi 0 models. As you can see, Ubuntu Mate does offer a very distinctive and very stylish desktop. Like Raspbian, it also comes preloaded with a sold array of software that includes accessories, educational programs, games, graphic software, the Firefox web browser and other internet apps, the LibreOffice suite, programming languages, and other sound, system, and accessibility tools. Sadly, at the time of making this video in July 2018, there's no Ubuntu Mate image available for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. However, this will no doubt become available in due course, and I understand that with a bit of messing around it is possible to update a microSD card to install this very nice distro on the latest Pi. Next on my list is RetroPi, which is an emulator that allows a Raspberry Pi to run games which were originally written for old consoles and arcade machines and early microcomputers. Technically, RetroPie is not really a distro, as it runs on top of Raspbian and can be installed as a separate program. However, because it's available as an image file that can be written to a bootable microSD card, I'm including RetroPie in this top distros list, and certainly it's a very popular Pi install. RetroPie offers a graphical front-end called Emulation Station that functions as a game launcher and which is highly configurable with a really slick interface. Indeed, RetroPie looks very professional indeed, it's got some great artwork in the menus, and it's an absolute pleasure to use. When first installed, RetroPie is empty, there are no games in the launcher, and hence users need to load in their own games. And this is where things get a bit tricky, as while RetroPie itself is perfectly legal, the download and execution of copyrighted programs is most certainly not. This said, there are now many homebrew games that have been written for old consoles by retro gaming enthusiasts and which can be legally downloaded and run on RetroPie. Such homebrew games include Blade Buster for the NES, which is available from the High Level Challenge website and which I'm attempting to play here. OSMC, or the Open Source Media Center, is my favorite distro for playing video media on a Raspberry Pi and has been designed to be very easy to use. The system is based on Kodi and can either play media contained on a local USB drive plugged into the Pi or on a local network device, or else it can stream online media from add-on services. And a great many of these add-on services are available, although of course here I've installed YouTube because where else would you expect me to find video online? One of the things I really like about OSMC is that it's got a really clean, really simple interface, and it's very straightforward to operate with a variety of control devices. 
This said, you can customize OSMC, you can change the interface, you can, for example, select different skins. And so, for example, you could opt for a skin called Estuary, which makes OSMC look and feel just like Kodi, which some people may prefer to use. Next on my list, we have Open Media Vault, the first of three headless distros that allow a Raspberry Pi to do something really useful over a network. Specifically, Open Media Vault turns a Raspberry Pi into a network attached storage device or NAS, so allowing it to provide storage to other computers on a network. What we're looking at here is the web interface used to configure Open Media Vault, and which makes setting up a NAS on a Pi as straightforward as possible. Our second distro that runs without a monitor is Pi Music Box. This allows a Pi to be used as a standalone streaming music player that can play local or network content, as well as music from Spotify, Google Music, SoundCloud, and lots of other online services. What we're looking at here is the web interface for Pi Music Box, here being accessed on an Android tablet. The idea is that you have the Pi hooked up to a speaker somewhere across the room and control its music playback from a smartphone, tablet, or laptop. As you can see, the controls are very straightforward. Indeed, the only thing to note is that the standard audio output on a Pi is pretty poor, and so Pi Music Box is best installed on a Pi which has been fitted with a USB sound card or audio hat. Our final web control distro is Motion iOS, which turns a Raspberry Pi into a network surveillance system that gives you web browser access to one or more cameras. These can be USB webcams and or a Raspberry Pi camera and can be motion triggered to record still images or video or to send appropriate alerts. As I demonstrated in a recent video, Motion iOS is a very good distro indeed and presents all kinds of possibilities to use a Raspberry Pi in lots of interesting ways. Finally on this list, we have a wildcard entry called Flint OS. This is a Chromium operating system that effectively turns your Raspberry Pi into a Chromebook. This means that, on boot, you have to log in with a Google account, or else choose to access as a guest, and then are taken straight to a web browser where you do all of your work in the cloud. Aside from the browser, there's a very tidy desktop with access to user information and settings on the bottom right, and then, on the other side of a screen, an icon to launch the Chromium browser. This functions just like any other version of Chrome or Chromium, and as you can see, can access the world's favourite website. Also on the bottom left of the desktop is a launcher icon for accessing a range of Google apps. These include a Files app for viewing files on your Google Drive account, or else any files you've downloaded locally to the machine. There are also icons for accessing common Google productivity applications, such as the Google Docs word processor. Back in late 2017, Flint OS was rebranded as FidoS, but then its publisher, Flint Innovations, was taken over by a company called Neverware, and since that time, the future of this distro has been unclear. Not least, this means there's not currently a Flint OS install for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, which is a real shame, as Flint OS is a really cool and very distinctive distro. So there you have it, my top 8 Raspberry Pi distros, that allow us to do all kinds of exciting things with a Raspberry Pi. However, I'm sure some of you out there have got other distros you really like, that you think should be on this list, and if so, please let us all know about them down in the comments section. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.